Hi everyone. Welcome to Monday evening art class. I hope you're all well. Has a lovely weekend or whatever. Um, so if you've been to the art class before, you know what to expect. And funny enough, our model has done the art class many a time, so he knows what to expect. So he won't be too surprised. But if you haven't done it before, let me just explain that it started off as an art class that I used to do in the pub, but because um, of the virus, of course, the pub shut. So I started doing it online, but because we, we couldn't really see what anyone was doing. We thought, we, hi, Doug. We thought we'd better have a chit chat as well. So I've got lots of different guests on so I can find out their business, see what they're up to. Then you can draw them while we're chit chatting. But you, you, mean, you can just listen if you want, but I'd really love it if you did try to draw something. If you haven't got anything handy, you can always find something, a felt pen, a bit of scrap paper, back of an envelope, lipstick. Just have a go. I mean, you can do a drawing in one minute if you really want to, even 10 seconds. Um, so the model will try and stay still. But if you want to take a screenshot of him first, you're very welcome. So, oh, hi, Pauline. So that you can um, listen and draw and he won't be moving. She'll have a screenshot. Um. When you finish your picture, if you could send it in via Facebook Messenger to Isolation Station Hastings. And if we've got a few in, we'll show them at the end. Otherwise, what we'll do is probably tomorrow, pop a gallery. That's my favourite bit. And about lots of people who don't even come to the class look forward to the gallery to look at everyone's pictures. Um, so don't be shy, though. Don't think, oh, it's rubbish. I shan't send it up. Just send it up. Whatever you do, it's all worthwhile and really lovely. So, oh, I better explain as well. We had a bit of practice beforehand and Donald's all the way in Dumfries. And it's a bit funny, the link on his computer. I mean, the picture of him is really great, but I don't think he can hear me properly. And he has to wait about two seconds between me asking a question and him answering. So it might mend itself, who knows? But if you could put up with that, that would be lovely. And if you want to ask Donald any questions, please do. And we put them up at the bottom and we discuss them. So without any further ado, live from Dumfries, it is Mr. Donald Urquhart. Is it? <laughs> oh. Hi, Sue. Oh, Donald, that was a marvellous entrance. I'm thrilled. I wasn't expecting that, so it made me laugh. I know you've got a love of old Hollywood film stars. Yes, I do. Yes. Right. Where shall we begin? I know what. Can you tell me a little... Oh, Karen, you love my glasses. These are the ones I was wearing yesterday. Oh, well. Hi, Hannah. Just say hello to people for a minute. Oh, hi, Net Bailey. A first time. A welcome. Enjoy yourself. Oh, hi, Debbie. She's a regular. Um, so tell us a bit about, didn't your mum have a fancy dress shop or a wig shop or something? It was a wig shop. This was in the 60s. Uh, she thought that people in Dumfries would be joining the, the international fashion for big wigs. But no, it didn't catch on and she ended up doing haircuts in the back shop. Oh. Did they, do you think it had a bit of an effect on you, those wigs? Oh, well, yeah, definitely. I mean, my mum was in the theatre too, so from, I don't know, about five or six years old, I was going to the theatre all the time and uh, trying on costumes, trying on wigs, or oh, I was on the stage, so yeah, big influence. And so you went to sort of just regular school in Scotland, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, and then which school? So, uh, I went to St. Michael's School at first and then uh, St. Joseph's College and then repeated a year in second year at Dumfries High School and then went to Dumfries Academy. Ooh. And you didn't go to art school, did you or did you? I didn't actually, but I did. I went to Falkirk College of Technology to do a, a media course. This was yeah. in the it wasn't like media is now. 
yeah. uh, communication studies and uh, but at the same time I was going to Glasgow School of Art to do life drawing in the evenings. Yeah. So, well, how yeah, far oh, yeah, so, is Glasgow from Dumfries? It's, oh, it's a couple of hours on the bus, so I don't know how many miles it is. Oh, so it was a long journey then? Well, no, I moved to Glasgow. Oh, right, yeah. And that's how eventually I moved to London. So how did that mean you moved to London? Well, I moved to Glasgow um, and dropped out of college and then I couldn't get a job for ages until I got a job in a clothes shop called Cruise. I was going to move back to Dumfries at that Cru point. Cruise, it was a high fashion store. And from there, I got a job in the warehouse, um, not the Jeff Banks warehouse, no. but uh, another shop called the warehouse. And uh, of course, I was going out to clubs every night. And that's how I met the people that influenced me into moving to London. I know, because you were really young when I first met you, weren't you? About 18 or something? About 19. 19. Yeah, I was. I, I went down to London on holiday when I was about 19. Yeah. And in that week, I met you, and I met Lee Bowery, I met Scarlett, I met Louise Neal. I, I was staying with Angela. Remember Angela Farley? Yeah, I uh, think Angela, she lives in Brighton now. Yeah, Angela from Frankie Goes to Hollywood. I was staying on her floor. I was in holiday for about a week, and I just decided that I was definitely moving to London, so I did. Where did you meet Angela? I met her in Maestro's, a little nightclub in Glasgow. It was oh. uh, the, the Frankie tour. There was yeah. her and Julie Lucy and Julie Sissons had come along, I think, because she'd made the costumes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we just hit it off straight away and uh, went out drinking. And she fell in love with Glasgow and she came back for a holiday, uh, took her to Edinburgh, and then we went for a holiday in Liverpool as well. So... Oh, I love your holidays in these towns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 19, living the life. I know, it's lovely. And yeah. so then was it, you were in London? Yeah, I got a, a, a reference from my employer, which said uh, Donald has a flair for fashion. <laughs> and I took that to Jones in the King's Road and they... Yeah looked me up and down and thought, oh, yes, he's got a flair for fashion. So, yeah, they took me on. That just sounds like a magic story, really, doesn't it? It's like just something at a smash in time. I know, that you just get a job. Marvellous. <laughs> and so you were sort of, you didn't even have to sort of wangle your way into the London nightclub scene. You were there as soon as you arrived. I was there. I already knew everybody by the time yeah. I moved on. Yeah. Oh. And how long did you work at Jones? Oh, it wasn't long. I think I lasted, I don't know if it was six months. Oh, it was quite definitely long. from the summer through Christmas. And I think by the end of January, I was going out every night. I was I was kind of groggy and hung over in the shop a lot of yeah. the times. And then there was the fade away incident, which I don't think really helped my career. Which incident? Faye Dunaway. Oh, what was it that? Was, well, she used to come into the shop all the time. And what, Faye Dunaway? Always, yeah, she'd come in in a great big floppy hat, big dark glasses, crocheted yeah. waistcoat to the floor, and it'd be all very like this. You don't know who I am, do you? Yeah. Going through, oh, I love this. And she'd put this on hold for me. Shh, you don't know who I am. And one day I said to her, I said, I said, Miss Dunaway, you'll be very glad to know that we don't have any wire coat hangers in this store. And she looked at me like this and she went Wah! and stormed off, never to return. What, just because you called her a name? Well, because I'd mentioned Mommy Dearest inadvertently. Oh, is that a, th oh, is that a thing from Mommy mentioned Dearest? It she didn't want to, anyone to mention Mommy Dearest. It was just after that uh -huh. came out. You see, that's me. Yeah. I didn't even know that reference. But I do know that Americans really hate wire coat hangers. I, I went to stay with my friend in America and I had one hanging up. And he goes, please, could you take that down? It's offending me. 
they're a symbol of poverty. I know. Because oh. Joan Crawford, her <laughs> mother, her mother took in washing. Her mother oh. did laundry and wire coat hangers were what they used to give back people's laundry. Like once you pressed a garment, it would go in a wire hanger. So to use a wire hanger in your closet and not return them to the laundry for reuse meant you couldn't afford proper hangers. And that's oh. why she hated wire ones. Oh, oh, see, that's very interesting. Yeah. So where did you end up after Jones? <clears throat> Place called Audience Selection. I think oh, where was. everyone worked. <laughs> yeah. Some and... of my models have worked there. They have, yeah. Uh, and not long after that, I was discovered. And I was oh, on the cover of... That looks nothing like you. That's hilarious. It is hilarious. I know. Oh, and so you started doing photo love stories? No, I didn't. I, did, oh. I only did covers. I did yeah. eight my guy covers and this is the annual 1987 uh i did some women magazine i was in women as oh. a, almost a photo story yeah uh, and uh shortly after that i, I moved to japan what because she's just covered by a model agency i was discovered actually by david la chapelle at first he did some oh, pictures yeah. Uh, it was meant to be for Interview magazine, but they ended up yeah. in Blitz instead. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, then I started doing my guy covers shortly after that. And once I'd done enough of them, I took them to an agency and they gave me a ticket to Japan. What, so you were modelling in Japan? I was there, yeah, I was. That, would, that was 86 and 87. Yeah. Oh, they loved the yeah. British then, didn't they? They're obsessed. They did, yeah. And how was that? Was it catwalk modelling or photographic modelling? Mostly editorial, mostly photographic. I did a little bit of catwalk. Yeah. Um, not so much, but uh, yeah, I mean, look at me like that. I was, I was so thin, really straight yeah. black hair, and uh, I almost looked a little bit oriental they used to say they thought i looked a bit half and half so was that popular then yeah it was and also they, they thought i looked a bit androgynous and that was very of that time wasn't it mid 80s yeah. oh do you, yeah. when you're on the cover of my guy did you get any fan letters from girls oh i don't think i did no <laughs> disappointing i remember my little cousin was she was more the age group of my guy readers and all her friends at school were very impressed that she knew a my guy model. I bet I was as well. You know, I'm mm. easily impressed. Right. So, how long did you spend in Japan? Well, I was there '86 with my boyfriend, and then we went travelling around Southeast Asia. What friend was that? Oh, I can't remember his name now. So. Oh, good. That's all right then. <laughs> uh, and. Well, we, we actually, we split up when we came back to Britain. I had dysentery type illness. I went down to, oh, do you like medical stories, Sue? Yes, Sorry. I love them, I love them. I went down to seven and a half stone, so I was like a skeleton. In fact, one day a friend of mine came and rang the doorbell and I went to answer the door. And she said, oh my God, you look terrible. Is it AIDS? Yeah. And I was a bit horrified. I said, no, but um, thank you for your concern. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I recovered from that in Dumfries. And when I was well enough, the next year, I went back to Japan and I worked in Tokyo and Osaka that time. I moved. I was bored. I'd done Tokyo before and Osaka was near Kyoto. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it there. Yeah, because I've never been to Japan. I always think I'd be frightened because I won't understand any of the language or the signs. No. I'm sure I can, really. Yeah, you, you get on all right, yeah. Yeah. 
And so what happened when you came back from Japan? Well, then I was thinking about going to Italy. Um, I don't know what happened. Oh, and then the friend I was going to be staying with in Italy moved to London with an old friend of mine from Japan and there was a spare room and he said, why don't you come in and move in with us? So I moved back to London. And did you carry on modelling? No, I got a job in oh, Ivory's Piano Bar. Where was that? Know, which was near St Catherine's Dock, um, just off between there and Cable Street. Yeah. Uh, it was very really before that was fashionable. It was a guy called Frederick ran it, and they had a grand piano, and it was all pink and you know champagne and cocktails. Yeah. Uh, after that, I worked in a place called The Locomotion, which was um, just off Leicester Square. Hello, Glenn. Oh, the hello. dog hello. coming. Show the dogs. Everyone loves a dog. Okay, right, you've got it. <laughs> you, are you going out? Oh, Glenn. Oh, oh Glenn he loves you. Oh, he's missed me. Hello, Glenn. Okay, right, say hello to Sue. Hi, Glenn. Say hi. Oh, oh so he's not interested in me. <laughs> oh. All right, off you go. Oh. Yeah, so he went to the locomotion off Leicester Square. Yeah. And uh, I'm trying to think where I worked after that. I've gone a blank. Oh, that's my mum shutting the door. Harvey Nichols, Gap, Post Office. You've frozen. Donald, you've frozen. Sorry, everyone. We try and get him back. Leave, Sorry, I leave the other door. We're all right now. Yeah. Paul else fashion. Here we oh, there we go. I think the dog made the computer freeze. Hello? Yeah, you're all right now. That's all right. I think the computer right. froze the dog. So where are we? we you've left locomotion. What were you doing at locomotion? I was working the bar. Oh, yeah. uh, you've been uh, a hard worker, Donald, haven't you? I have, yeah. I think I've, I can't think after locomotion, I would have started doing drag shows. I used to do Madame Jojo's. Oh, yeah. Um, the you know the piano bar I worked in there, and I was also doing the powder room on a Wednesday mm -hmm. night. Was that at heaven? At heaven, and then Thursday was I Sinai. Yeah. So yeah, I was I was singing and doing drag. That's about eighty nine, ninety. Yeah. yeah. She always more of a kind of. Um underground drag performer you're not sort of the old styly were you no not at all Very quite a twist on it yeah a bit twisted fashion drag yeah. really yeah yeah you've always been very um creative with all your ideas and you're very good at getting them done and doing them which i'm always impressed with yeah well and you too sue you're oh oh Does maggie all do First in pencil, then do the line. Oh, right, yeah. What I do with my drawing is it's a 2B pencil, always, because I'm obsessed with 2B. I'll draw it very lightly, and if there's any rubbing out needs done, rub it out. Get the basic design right, and then I get a very fine brush and slowly go around it with black ink. So mm. the and then after that, you can rub the pencil mark out and you end up with something really tidy. Nice. See, my thing is, when I do things with pencil, I leave the pencil in half the time. Because in my mind, that's telling a story. It's part of the picture, my process of doing it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, I, when I used to do flyers for my club, The Beautiful Bend, I would always leave the the pencil on that because uh, when you take them to a photocopier it rubs the pencil out all you get is the ink and Absolutely. then years later when i was showing these drawings in in germany i think was it frankfurt or somewhere 
they were horrified. They said, in Germany, we would never, ever allow the showing of these pencil marks. But that's a really funny thing, because I think in art you can do whatever you want. Yeah, it's your but picture, I think, it's your choice. I think a professional illustrator would never oh, leave right. a pencil mark in. Yeah, because if you, I suppose, illustration as a job is different to artist as a job, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah. 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 Do you call yourself an artist or an illustrator? It depends if I'm doing art or illustration. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, illustrator could mean you know, things like this. I would say that's an that illustration. Think, yeah. um, but it's also art as but, well, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think any drawings are. So, as we're talking about art, how did your art career take off? Because one minute you're signing on, working in Gap and that, next minute you're a world-acclaimed artist, Donald. Well, How yeah, it took me by surprise, Sue. I, it was basically, I was doing the club, The Beautiful Bend, yeah. and when I did it in the 90s with Sheila Tequila and DJ Harvey, yeah. we used to paint on the walls and have all sorts of wild decorations. But then I'd have to go and paint over the walls and they got so thick with paint that Central Station had to have a refurb and chip all the painted over walls off because they were damp yeah. as well. It was big bubbles of paint. And they said, look, you can't paint on the walls anymore. Why don't you put up photocopies? So I started filling these A3 sketchbooks with drawings, you know, ink them over, photocopy them, put them up A3 size, and people would take them home at the end of the night as a kind of souvenir. Oh, wish I'd so, taken one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the, I ended up with about 20 sketchbooks full of drawings, and there was a, yeah. a gallery owner came down to the club and he said, uh, I really like your drawings. Have you ever thought about showing them? And I said, well, no. And he said, well, bring them to the gallery. So uh, at the time I was working as a postman, so I put a few sketchbooks in my postman's bag, went in and he said, oh, very nice, very nice. Uh, I'm going to frame about 10 of them. I'm going to take some to uh, the Armoury show in New York. Amazing. And he sold, I think he sold three or four of them to the yeah. um, Museum of Modern Art. <gasps> That's incredible. You've frozen again. Do, do, do. Can you press a couple of buttons on the computer? Because you've frozen. It's good for drawing, but we can't hear you. I'm sorry about this, everyone. We're doing our best. Uh, you can, oh, oh, here we I'm come back. Again. Uh, if you leave it open, I'll get the Wi-Fi. Oh, do you think that's right. in the door? Ah, oh, right. We love it. No yeah. one mind the dog coming in. They love a dog. Now, no, I don't mind the dog coming in. Yeah. Hey, Glenn. So, well, so how amazing that you really didn't have the thought in your head to go and be an artist. Then it just happened to you. Yeah. But I find that my life's like that. Really, I don't really aim for anything. Things just happen. Yeah, they do. Come on, Glenn. You're not going out. Come on. This way. But going to the oh. armory, armory in New York's amazing. Well, it is. I, I mean, I had no idea about it. But after that, he, sh he showed some in uh, Shoreditch in London, Magnani yeah. Gallery. And uh, after that, I was asked to, to show with Maureen Paley. Yeah. Oh, and then... After that, I was nominated to be in the, the Bex Futures Award, so that was that was kind of incredible. Yeah. So I remember at one point, do you remember that you were on the list of the top hundred most influential artists in the world? That's right. Hear that, Glenn? What about yeah. that? You should be proud of Donald Glenn. You should. Yes. And let me think. And then Bistro Tech have always been very good too, haven't you? And used your pictures a lot. That's right, yeah. Always big fans, Bistro Tech. I did that little shrimpies in King's Cross. Do you remember that? A little... Are you getting me? Yeah, you're yeah, back. The, it was the, the, the all-night garage in King's Cross. They converted it into a restaurant. 
Yeah. And I did some designs for the decor in there. I know, it was lovely. Yeah. And then you've made films as well. We're starring you. One of which I was in. Well, I wouldn't say starring, I'd say a minor role. I what was I, I a kid? Some cleaning woman or something? That's right. Yeah, you were a featured... Yeah, it wasn't a camera. <laughs> But it was it was a pivotal role, Sue. Pivotal. It was pivotal, yeah. It meant a lot. But the best thing was, wasn't it, that it got shown at Freeze and we had our picture taken by David Bailey for Vogue. David Bailey for Vogue, exactly. Yeah. I was very proud. And I did tell everyone. They went, it's a very small picture, Sue. I went, well, it's still David Bailey in Vogue, even though it's tiny. <laughs> and... Right, so what are you working on at the moment? Well, I've just been doing some illustrations for a, a monthly newsletter horoscope for a Paradust a blog in New York. Yeah. You hear that, Glenn? Um, I can show you some if you'd like. Oh, yeah, please do. Don't knock, Glenn. You won't fall off, will you, Glenn, if I do this? Don't fall off. Go on, off. Glenn, behave. Right. I like the way Glenn matches your jumper. It's intentional. Oh, very good. So, yeah. Oh. That one's Who's Aries. That? It's yeah. Billy Holiday representing yeah. Aries. And then... You are very behind. tidy in your book, aren't you? I am. This one is Keith uh, Herring. Keith Herring. Did you Taurus. watch that documentary that was on about him a while ago? I didn't see that. No, well, not was, yet. No, I very much enjoyed it. He was so young when he died. Ah. Yeah, it was good. Those two twins. Those two twins for Gemini. Oh, yeah. and Debbie Did Harry. Debbie Harry for Cancer. Yeah. The lion the from Wiz Wizard of Oz. Bert, oh. Bert Lahr from the Wizard of Oz. This one's a bit more difficult to see. Peggy Guggenheim. I won't recognise her. Yeah, Very no, well, not many people would, but that's Virgo. Oh. And then here's one. Oh. Is that. Um, it's Libra. It's was Joey it, Arias. I, I knew it was. I've, I've seen him in concert. I've seen him do a show. Yeah. Who's that one? Oh. Hang on. Oh, I don't know. Bigger. Edith Who? Bouvier Beale. Edith Bouvier Beale from Grey Gardens. And this one oh, is. Yeah. Can't see. You can see that. Bet Midler, Sagittarius. And this one, Ethel Merman. Now, I've got a question for you, Donald. Why are uh -huh. you seem so keen on camp women? Camp old women. You love them, don't you? People like you. Um, My camp old woman. <laughs> yeah, Sue, you're very camp. Very camp indeed. Uh, I don't know what it is. What draws me to these hilarious, fascinating, fabulous, glamorous people? Yeah. Just hey, Oh, and what else can we talk about? Look at my head. Now, so are they in the magazine? Are they available to purchase those prints? Or no, they're they're online at the moment, just as little yeah. symbols in a, a, a zodiac that you get sent out. Yeah, and what website? Be, be? It's pa Paridust. P A R I D U S T. dot com. I. It's P A R I, a bit like yeah. Paris, as in yeah. Paris without the S, and then yeah. dust, as in look at the muck in here, dust. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right, I'll have a look at that then. And, oh, because you lived in Paris for a while, didn't you? I, well, I did, yes. And la how la. was that? Entre nous, merveilleux, madame, merveilleux. <laughs> I know you found you found a, a nice friendship with a pigeon, didn't you, when you were there? I did. Little Snowy used to come and visit me every morning on yeah. my balcon. Uh, and also, well, I was seeing Mr. Perlow 
all the time because he was hard oh, at yeah. work. Um, yeah, Mr. If people don't know, Mr. Pell's an amazing corsetier, I'd say. He used to make corsets for Lee, and he was well known for having, was it a 13 inch waist? Something like that, so yeah. Because I remember yeah. when Lee was dying, um, Mr. Pearl came to visit him at the hospital, and we all had to wear pennies on the front because of germs. And then when he turned round, I've never, you know, like nurses, you imagine they've seen everything, really. Yeah. They were just like dumbstruck, nudging each other, going, Look at that man's waist. He used to wear really tightly fitted jackets, but I've heard that he's given up. Is this the case? I, yeah, he'd, he'd given up when I was in Paris. Um, it was bad for him, his doctor said. Yeah, how many his... years does he have that corset for on that waist? Oh, I mean, 20 years yeah. more. A long time. It must have been agony. So I went out for dinner with him and he could only eat little tiny bits of anything. Oh, yeah. They couldn't have anything that bored to them either. Yeah. Oh, no, but he ate like a horse when I was living in Paris with him. Oh, well, when he took it off? Oh, yeah, but he was able to eat fine, yeah. Good. Because he's done them, um, he does some, one of the most beautiful things I ever did. He did was Vivian Westwood. That corset with the beads, like a bleeding heart. Oh, that's beautiful, that one, yeah. Love that. Yes. Mm. Do you still live in Paris or is he back? He's in Edinburgh. He moved oh. back after I moved back to yeah. Scotland. Yeah. So, do you ever see him still? I haven't seen him for a while. Not since last year, actually. I haven't seen yeah. him this year. Yeah, well, you can't do much this year, can you? You can't really go and see anyone. No, I can't go on a bus or anything. It's awful. Can't go to London. I know. How do you, yeah. how do you cope during lockdown? I've got Glenn. Oh. <laughs> um, so you just got to take one day at a time and don't feel pressured. Don't feel like you should be doing normal things. Just kind of get into the, the new weirdness, you know? Oh, Jackie Wright wants to know more about oh, Paris. Do yeah. oh, you know Jackie? Off you go. I do know Jackie. We were at school together. She was in Oh, how lovely. Yeah, in secondary school. Yeah. Hi, Jackie. She um, wants to know about Paris. Uh, well, Paris, it, it was strange for me because... And I was I was in Montmartre in, in in this studio in a walled garden, and uh, I didn't have any internet. I had a two ring stove, a pan, and a frying pan. Yeah. And I thought this I'm in the middle of Paris with the basics of life, and I I couldn't get the internet until I'd had a bank account for three months. So it was all this, everything's so complicated. Um, yeah. And my. French was really rusty. I mean, I understood French, but speaking it, it wasn't happening at first. Yeah. But I just thought, this is good. This is really good for me to to focus on who I am and, and what I want to do. Yeah. And not be distracted by a, a, your everyday life. It's good so at some point in your life just to remove yourself completely from your situation. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, how old was that? I was 48 or 49, I think. It was a yeah. clean slate, a, a fresh fresh outlook. Did you do much work while you were there? No. <laughs> well, yes, I did. <laughs> I, I managed to do a, a little book about Lee Bowery um, yeah. for a show in Rome, and they were putting on an exhibition in Vienna at that time on Lee, and I helped them yeah. to get in touch with people for that. And I had a catalogue of Lee's garments that I'd done with Nicola. Oh, I remember uh, you did that, yeah. Didn't you help uh, Nicola yeah. do that Australian guy for that Australian? That's right. She'd, I think she just bought her house in Brighton at that point, and everything of Lee's was in the attic. And I remember it was 95 degrees or something. And we were going up and down a ladder to the attic with all these massive costumes, shoving them through yeah. the hole and putting them on a stand, photographing them, writing down what they were. That was really exhausting, but um, what a lot of stuff he made. I'd never seen it all before in its entirety. But, uh, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. 
and because I went to Australia and the man kind of made out he did everything himself. Oh, yeah, that funny man. Yeah, he was rather odd, wasn't he? (laughs) Yeah. He was rather fond of himself, I have to say. Mm, He was. Yeah, like going on to me like he was the best man in the world. Oh, why did you move back to Scotland? Look, David Beckham's asking you that question. Ah, well, <laughs> well, you know, moving from Paris back to London, I'd already left London because it wasn't the London I'd moved to when I first moved there. It had just gone a bit yuppified. Everyone had, well, there was the whole beard thing. Everyone was going around with beards. Hipsters. Looking, hipsters, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, it had all gone hipster and all very gentrified. And after Paris, I didn't want to go back to that. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll move to Dumfries for a while and I'll see how I feel about moving somewhere else. And I actually found that I enjoyed this much better than I would have enjoyed London. It just wasn't the same London, you know? And I can go to Glasgow. I've, I've been doing bits and pieces of artwork in Aberdeen. So it's yeah. not a bad place to be. I know. See, I'm the one, you know, I left London. Who would have thought that I'd ever have left London? I loved it so much. I know. <laughs> so London, you're such a London girl, Sue. I know. But I think that I'm very glad that I wasn't in London during lockdown and everything, because it sounded horrible. Yeah. I mean, at least here I've got a garden and everything. Well, and you've got the sea. You exactly. Know, you've got that makes air. great... Oh, you've got lots Are of you... friends there, too. Um? You've got lots of friends there, too. I know. Um, They're all moving here. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm near the sea. Um, I'm on a tidal river. I think it would take me something like 20 minutes to walk along the river down to the sea. Oh, how lovely. uh, Yeah. Oh, here we go. (laughs) Oh, here we go. Paul Wayne. Bid me round. Live from Hull. Pete. about your friendship with Pete Burns? Well, Pete loved my, my... I used to dance in drag all the time and he loved my outfits. He, he used to stand just staring at me, mesmerised. And he said, we're doing a tour and I want you to come on tour. So I said, oh, all right. I think I was working at Harvey Nichols or Liberty at that yeah. point. I was working at Liberty. Uh, so I went, I went to this gym where he was doing his rehearsals and I had to wear high heels to rehearse. And my part of the show was I was to come out with a violin and then I was to set it on fire and we're going to do this at Kinky Galinky. That was the first time. Anyway, the night came and the stage manager said, no way, you're not setting this in fire and throwing it into the crowd. So I said, Pete said, okay, just smash it. So I smashed the violin. But this continued on the tour. Everywhere we went, it had the same conversation. Right, and he's going to set it on fire, and we're up in flames. But they never allowed me to, so I smashed a lot of violins. I hope they weren't uh, stratospheres. No, no, they weren't. They were just knackered old things that yeah. they found in shops. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was, what can I say? Another world, another dimension when you're... So what, people. what was his most bizarre behaviour? Well, I think the poltergeists, because I would be in bed and I'd hear him clack, 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 coming up the stairs, Donald, Donald, wake up, we've got a poltergeist. And I'd be like, oh, <laughs> what now? And he, I'd go into his room and there'd be no duvet. So yeah. I'd be really tired of in the wardrobe and the doofy would be in the wardrobe. How did it get there? And you know, there'd be one of his stiletto shoes would be glued to a car outside the house. And he'd say, oh, it's the poltergeist. And uh, yeah, the poltergeist got a bit boring after a while. But uh, We just thought, it, did he really think there was a poltergeist? Or was he trying to get you to believe there was one? I think he was entertaining himself and entertaining me. Yeah. And it was also seeing how, because he was gaslighting me, I went to a doctor at one point and the doctor said, have you ever seen the film Gaslight? And I said, yes, yeah. I have. He, he, he wanted to know how 
much of his lies I would believe and how far I would try and lie to him that I believed them. Yeah, was, oh, I love stories like this. I was going along with these lies. So, um, I don't know, sometimes he would be saying really ridiculous things. I remember one night in particular, I had this cup of coffee and I was biting it, trying not to laugh out of me, like, are you yeah. laughing at me, Donald, are you laughing? And I was laughing because he was telling some story about how he bought a, a stuffed boy, it was a human corpse that had been embalmed, and he bought it in Portobello, but he took it to a graveyard and it went missing. And then the next day it was at his window and all this kind of thing. And I'm like, I'm meant to believe this. But he lived in a he lived a fantasy life. He, it was very norm Norma Desmond, and very sunset. He certainly did. Oh, yeah. so how long did the tour go on for? Oh, what did we did? What did we do? Liverpool, Manchester, Blackpool, and Krefeld in Germany. Which oh, was, so it was, was international it, then. It was. Um, it, <laughs> It was called Pete Burns and the Sexy Assassins at that point. And in Krefeld, we were told that we were the worst act that had ever been seen live in Germany ever. That's fantastic. Um, I'll be thrilled. And it, we were because Pete, it was too late coming on stage. Me and Gina Farla had sort of danced to four beer backing tracks with no singing. Yeah. He was meant to be singing on while we waited for him to come on and he, he wasn't even fully dressed when he did come on. Uh, yeah, and I had to help him sing the, all the lyrics that he'd forgot. So, uh, yeah, it was a mess. Oh, bless him. Worst now, ever in I remember, I remember when I asked you to do this, you told me you had a gruesome story to tell me about a medical thing. Was it when you broke your arm? Might be my finger. Oh, because so I'm sure you said you had a terrible medical story to oh, tell no. me. Oh, well, I was te that's what, no, I wasn't I telling you about when I had dysentery and I went down to seven and a half stone. Yeah. I've told oh, you I'm that sure one. there was a, another medical story you said you were going to tell me. But you did recently well, break your arm, didn't you? I didn't break my arm. I lost the top of my, my finger. Oh, oh, that's still quite... Oh, <laughs> how did you do that? I don't know if I can get you to see that. Look. Yeah. It's very Don't you find it's really weird this stream yard because it's the opposite way to what you think. I know it's very dyslexic. I know it's creepy. So what did you do to lose the top of your finger? Well, I was walking my friend's dog around a field, and I mean, I, 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 once a year I would go and live in his house when he went on holiday and gone away to Germany. This yeah. was the first day, so we walked around the field with one of these big, long, extendable leaves. I let the dog go under this five bar gate while I went over the top and on the other side I picked up the lead and the dog was lying down and I thought that's not right and I looked up the, there was a little kind of dirt path and there was a cat lying and the cat leapt into a hedge, the dog leapt into a hedge, the lead went really tight and sliced the top of my finger off. The last thing I remember was looking through my fingernail in reverse and it was clear as it fell off. So I knew that the from the knuckle up was yeah. gone. So I just made my hand into a fist, got the dog with the lead, got it into the cottage it was staying in, took it off the lead. Did you look the for the bit of finger? No, it had smashed and it would be oh, right. in mud. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I didn't because I could have reinfected myself. I could have got oh, an yeah. infection. So I uh, just, there was a towel hanging up that had just been washed. Put that around my hand, got some ice in it, went outside, no phone signal, and there was blood. And I thought, ah, and I was in the countryside, but I'd remembered seeing a, a builder's van up this little dirt track outside a cottage. So I went to that and the builder was getting in his van and he drove me to hospital. Yeah. And I was there, I was there in 10 minutes. And they said, well, we're just gonna have to see how much skin we can pull over the end of this to see whether or not we're going to have to file the bone down 
and there wasn't enough skin, so they said, we're going to have to rinse it thoroughly. They've slushed a lot of water into the wound and uh, rinsed it, filed the bone down, and I'd never had an operation in my life. This is my, my first time under general anaesthetic. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, you're disappearing oh. again. So they put me under... Tell me more about the... Oh, can you, can you hear me? Anaesthetic. Oh, the anaesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I woke up and no end of my finger. The odd thing is that getting it to move again has taken much longer than I expected because at first I just had to have it in a sling yeah. um, with a bandage yeah. on it. I tilted the dissolvable stitches had come out, that's right. And it was odd. Every time I went to get it checked over, they said, "Oh, that's fantastic! No infection, no infection." Like it, like they were expecting infection. Yeah. I think a lot of people go back to hospital with infections. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, wasn't infected. Uh, and yeah, now I've just got a shorter finger. Does it bother you at all? Do you mind it? <laughs> Because <laughs> you remember um, Graham Stevens, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, it's six years since he died today. But he lost oh. his finger in an industrial accident when he was really young. And he was so mortified. You always just sit like that so you couldn't notice that he didn't have the end of his finger. I go, Graham, embrace it. It's marvellous. It's a feature. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, I... I... I'm not going to start hiding my, my hand away and finding new ways to sit and all this kind of thing. If you can't hide it, make a feature of it. It's, uh, exactly. it's, it's part of, of what, who I am. It's part of what I am. So, yeah. yeah. Anyone got any more questions? Because we've only got, I know the time goes very quick. We've only got about 10 minutes left. Yeah, any minutes. more questions of interest to Donald and his time with Pete Burns? Oh, oh you made the sling yourself, oh, didn't the sling. you? Oh, the sling. I made it out of, thank you, Jackie, I made it out of a tea towel. I had different ones that I printed with beautiful bend pictures, and I, my favourite one was the one with Betty Davis's face all over it, with an eye patch and things like that. <coughs> I know. Well, I know it looked very glamorous. It did. I made, I made the best of it, I think. Yeah. Where did you get that jumper from? It's lovely. I got this in TK Maxx, Sue. It's is a it Donegal. Designed? It is. It's a Donegal pattern. This. Yeah. With the. Uh, oh, yeah, I can't even touch the. I'm going like that. I know. This... I'd, everyone, I've told you this before. At Streamyard, it's not like a mirror image. It's the opposite way, so you get all confused what you're doing. Yeah, because the door's there. Oh, but I'm pointing with this hand. It's all it's all odd here. Oh, it's very bizarre. It takes me a while to get used to it. Yeah, but it's a lovely yeah. jumper. It is. It's the only thing I've bought for ages. Is it? It was worth it. Well, it's lovely. The lockdown in Dumfries. I mean, there's there's new look, and there's Burton's. And there's a, I didn't know Burns it existed. Yeah, there's a, a JD Sport. Um, there's not a lot. So a TK Maxx, that's the only place I've been to get anything. And I thought, winter's come, I'll get a new jumper. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Would you like to relive the 80s just a wee bit? Ooh. I don't know. I see it as a, a, a kind of frantic, boozy mess, the 80s. Kind of desperate times, but exciting. Exciting when you look back on it, but you you forget how boring and repetitive the eighties were as well. There was nothing on yeah. TV. You ended up watching the Hitman and Her if you didn't have any money to go out. No internet. It no was... mobile phones. No mobile. That's it. No mobiles. You had to phone up your friends and your landline. Yeah. No. I how do you I feel about getting? Oh yeah. How did you meet superstar How... DJ Harvey? Oh, that's from oh, Mark Moore. Been... Hello, Mark. Me and Harvey were neighbours. He lived across the street from me when we lived in Wolfdale Road. And you lived... I knew him. 
I knew him through Fiona, who did Sign of the Times parties. And uh, we met him in the street one day and he said, come on, let's go to Central Station for a drink. And he said, I used to do clubs down here in the basement in the old rave days when it was the Prince Albert. And he said, do you fancy doing another club here? And I said, yeah. He said, well, what about getting your friend Sheila Tequila on board? And I went, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and he said, well, I have it for like trannies. And I said, oh, I don't know about that. And we, well, we, we all talked about it for a while. And eventually we thought, well, let's just have it for anybody. Anything goes. Everybody's welcome, no matter what you are, if you're a tranny or you want to wear sportswear, whatever you want to wear. And that's how we started doing the, the beautiful band. Uh, Harvey in those days had been doing Tonka and he was working at the Ministry of Sound, I think. That was 93, yeah. I think. Sorry, I can't hear you. Can't hear oh. you. Oh, right. Okay. No, I yeah. can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. I think we're yeah. back on now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're back on. Yeah, with all the minutes to go. Yeah. Uh, I haven't done many much modelling. Do you want some more modelling, anyone? Yes, yeah, nice positions, I think. Is your hair still very long on top? You make the curl. Very nice. Very, very nice. Do you mind getting older? Well, it's, you get used to it. I mean, I used to think that being old was being 30 when I was 17. And then when you're 30, you think, oh my God, I'm going to be really old when I'm 40. And then the next thing, you're 57. And I don't particularly think of myself as an old person. Actually, I when know. I had this accident, the doctor said to me, and I'd come round from the operation, he said, you know, you're young, fit and healthy. And I went, I said, uh, look, it's me you're talking to. I'm, yeah. um, but I'm 57. No, it's 56 then. He said, no, he said, you're, you're actually really fit. You've never been to um, your doctor for 15 years apart from to have a checkup to find out if you were healthy and it turned out that you were. He said, you're never ill, are you? I said, no, I'm not. He said, well, you're fit, you're healthy and you're young. So yeah. There you go. I, I never thought I was. I know. I don't care about getting. I'm thoroughly enjoy getting old. To be honest, I'm quite enjoy. You know, but oh, I still live the life of a child. So do um, I. See, this isn't a glass. This isn't a glass of water. It's a gin and tonic. <laughs> Mine's water. I'm being boring. Oh. Yeah. I know, but I just think knocking on. Oh, there we go, Anthony oh. Douglas. Thank you. Yeah, a favourite of mine too. Yeah, what did you do that for? It was a, a show called The Black Album at Maureen Paley Gallery and yeah. uh, it's now with Charles Saatchi. Oh, he shows it in his no. gallery. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Anthony designs banknotes. Oh, lovely. Quite interesting, job, I imagine. Yeah. I'm going to his house on Wednesday, so I might find out more. Oh, look know. under his bed, see if there's some banknotes there. I don't know, like... around. Yeah, stuffed under the mattress. Yeah, yeah, you never know. Must yeah. be funny, Joe. Um, mm -hmm. So what's the future holding for you, Donald? <clears throat> well, hopefully some travel at some point. But, well, then um, you travel a lot, haven't you? Yeah, but I won't be going anywhere now with all these lockdowns. I can't see myself getting to London. I'm not going there in January for the Burns night like usual. Um, I haven't been to Glasgow for about a year. So, hope, yeah, hopefully travel. I know. See, I'm not overly keen on travelling. So this is good. It's, I haven't been abroad for three years, and that was only for two nights. Mm. So this suits me down to the ground, so I've got an excuse not to have to go travelling. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, to be honest, I saw a friend the other day and he told me that once the lockdown was lifted, he works from home. He'd gone on loads of trips to Europe because the flights are really cheap, airports are empty, and he went to all the museums and art galleries because they were empty. Oh. And he said it was absolutely <clears throat> lovely. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so if you, but the thing is, he said that, I said, what about quarantining when you get back? He went, no one ever asked me for my name or address or anything. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Well, he worked, you know, could easily have done it because he worked from home, but didn't really have to because they never checked up. That's right, yeah. I know, because I've got a friend from Portugal here at the moment, and he did quite good for two weeks, but the police never rang or anything. I went, you know. Oh. Yeah. So that was... Oh, here we are, <laughs> Vanessa Crawford. Ah. Vanessa Crawford, oh, she's a lovely you. lady. We, we've ignited her um, interest in art, so she started drawing again, which is lovely. Oh, nice to hear, Vanessa. You have got a lovely voice, Donald. Oh, we've got oh. a picture up. Oh, oh, that's Donald, super. Donald, it's like a photograph. Me, it's lovely. me and Glenn. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love Glenn. They've got the pattern <laughs> on your jumper. Have any <laughs> yeah. else come in yet, Dan? Oh, oh. yeah. Another Who's that, one? Jan? Got a very orange jumper on there. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. Oh, I love that. Who did that one? So, I can't recognise that. It looks a bit like his Hiziru, but she hasn't got the little stars in the background. There's no stars, yeah. No. Anyone else coming? Oh, I love that one. Oh, oh, oh. you look very angry there, but I like it. Dude, this is very good to have a feel, yeah. Yeah. Expressionist. Yeah. Oh, then. Oh, oh that's really? beautiful. Really I excellent. Who... I know. I can't wait to see you drew it because I don't recognise the style. <laughs> but too. they've got a lovely, um, what's the word? A lovely line, a lovely touch. Yeah, they have. Very good eyes at seeing that. Mm -hmm. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Whoever you are. Type up who did it. Type up the message saying who you are, who did that picture. So we can flatter you. Oh, I'll find out eventually. Things when you say send a message, it takes a quite a while for them to appear. Oh, well, I'll have to have a look later when they, when you show them all. Oh yeah, I will. Don't worry. Now I better tell everyone who I've got next week. I've got because it's Halloween. <laughs> oh, Tara Bissett. Oh, she always oh. does beautiful drawings. She said she hadn't drawn for a long time. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Oh, that's Tara Bissett. Ah. So I'm just telling everyone who next week my models are, are you packing your bag, are James yeah. Pollard and Ian Forsyth, who are oh. filmmakers. They're a bit gothy, they're hilarious, and they've recently made a film about Nick Cave. <gasps> and they're very Ooh. funny and amusing. So they, and they're sort of, artists as well they've got a studio at um what's that place that used to have all your records somerset house yeah so that'd be interesting so that's a double one next week for you because they're work partners and romantic partners as well so you can get all the business of them ah. any more questions for donald in dumfries that i discovered was only four hours from london of a train Oh, what are your influence in terms of artists or illustrators? Uh, when I was a child, I used to draw Walt Disney pictures quite a lot, and I always really liked the <laughs> the Bruins and Ur Willy and the Sunday Post, which is a, a Scottish oh, Sunday paper, newspaper. Yeah. The black and white ink drawings. So uh, yeah. I think my earliest influences. What about Aubrey Beardsley? Yeah, Aubrey Beardsley, another influence, I would say. I've also yeah. really liked his work. I oh, know, I was looking him up today. He died when he was 25. He's a lot, didn't he? I know, I know terrible. Yeah. yeah. TB. I know. Luckily, yeah. we don't get that anymore, really. No, I know, on its way out, but who knows what's around the corner? <laughs> no, we haven't got TB, we've just got COVID. Or what's that one, <laughs> COVID extra or whatever it is, when you never get better? <laughs> Long not COVID. This, you know what they call it, we don't get better? COVID something or other. Oh, I hope I don't get it. COVID care, yeah. I know. So any last questions, anyone? Oh, no. Well, we see you next week, everyone. So please 
sign in at half past seven for the lovely world of Ian and Jane, who I'm sure you will find most amusing and interesting. And they'll be coming to us live from Bethnal Green. Thank you for joining me. Well, thank you very much, Donald. It was lovely to have a chat with you because I found out lots of info I wanted to know. And I've forgotten how many things we've done together, really. You've well, been a very things. busy person. You've very been a very good. big part of my life, Sue. So you have. Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure. Thank you. Starring in the film. Well, everyone, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for watching and see you next week. <laughs>